Hey, okay, so I'm here with Tudor Thomas, who's working on a project that should make it possible for anyone who wants to, to affordably contribute to a high-resolution alternative to Google Maps satellite view. Uh, Tudor, how long have you been working on projects like this? Um, me and the guys at our company, Drones Made Easy, um, yeah. have been dealing in um, you know, various forms of aerial imaging from military platforms and commercial mapping for you know, going on 15 years now. Um, you know, so we, we've developed some of the camera payloads that go in some of the full-size kind of milita militarized zone, um, okay. drones and then also built some kind of um, commercial mapping things. Um, and, and drones are pretty... Systems and data collection systems. Sorry for cutting you off. Drones are pretty sure. big and expensive for a long time, kind of by necessity, right? It's only recently that we've been able to slim them down to the point where it's affordable to have them, or am I, am I misunderstanding that? Uh, sure, you know the uh, you know, some of the military ones, like the, the predator drones mm -hmm. that everybody knows, and you know the ones that have weapons on them. Yeah. Um, those are huge. They're they're as big or bigger than a than a you know than an airplane. Yeah. Um, and then the fire scout is a full size helicopter just with nowhere for the people to sit. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so they're initially uh, you know the the military was using drones that were so big that they're essentially just a driverless full size aircraft. Okay. Um, so companies like you know DJI and Walkera have kind of taken you know some of the some of the online or some of the open source stuff that was online and mm -hmm. turned it into kind of smaller aerial platforms um, okay. more in, a, in the consumer electronics side of things. So, uh, drones named Easy is the name of the project, right? And it's currently on Kickstarter. Uh, yeah, maps maps made easy, maps is, made the easy. Pro is the project for that. Drones made easy is the is name the of our company. Okay. Yeah, we we sell we sell stuff. Um, do you, we you, sell drone drones? accessories and hardware and stuff. Okay, like and this is a software project, though. Correct. And, and what it's going to do is allow these drones to fly out, take pictures, and track where they are using GPS? Or how does that work specifically? Well, generally, generally, you kind of program it to tell it what to do, mm -hmm. and then it goes out and does it and mm -hmm. comes back, and then you have your data. Okay. Um, you know, that's, that's a fairly common thing. And even with the you know, full-size commercial mapping systems, it's, you go out and you fly around, and then all of a sudden you have this huge pile of data. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of where some of the engineers from our team have you know, spent a good majority of our careers um, in dealing with these huge piles of data that are collected from uh, you know, various aerial platforms. Okay, so if, if you're trying to do an alternative to a Google Map thing, the, the data we're talking about is high-resolution photos, and there's probably some kind of location data tied to it, or how's that all connect? So there, there's generally one of the biggest problems with um, with creating stitched map imagery is mm -hmm. synchronizing where the picture was taken, you know, as measured with a GPS versus where the picture was taken of on the ground and kind of doing the math to, to back that out. Okay. Um, what we're doing is generally um, just, just doing it based on the images. Okay. So you take all the images, you put it in, you don't necessarily have to put in any GPS data at all. Okay. Um, and right. it'll build a, you know, an accurate 3D model based on only on the images themselves. And then if you want to make it a, like a Google Maps overlay or, or, or whatever, mm -hmm. um, you can go in and say, okay, this point here is where this is in the world. This point here is where this is in the world. Oh, okay. And then it'll kind of align everything and make it, make it you So know, you, you could point to a landmark like a barn where you know where it is or a street corner sure. or something like that and then make it. Generally precise. something much smaller, but okay. <laughs> you, okay. know, you know, the, the corner of the barn. The corner you know, of the barn, sure. And then, yeah. and then you would go to a base map, you know, like Google Maps, and, and, and say, okay, this is here. You know, it, it, it's not, you know, it, you can get it within about a foot mm -hmm. uh, doing it that way. Um, you know, so it's not lining up to centimeters, you know, so it's not the full on, um, you know, uh, GIS, mm. you know, solution to, to what it is, but it's really close. And it's, it's really close. Much, it's much, much cheaper and it's much, much easier. Just what I was going to say, much, much cheaper. How much would it cost? Let's say I had a ranch or something and wanted to set this up myself. How much would that run me uh, if I wanted that? It's interesting. So, you know, based all of our price, we, have, we run an all point system. Um, mm -hmm. And the points run or determine or the amount of points it takes to do something is basically determined by how many images um, are uploaded to our okay. system and then we process. So you could take the same. You know, look at the same barn for with two thousand images, mm -hmm. and we're going to charge you for processing two thousand images, not for 
you know, the tenth of an acre that that barn takes up. Got it. Uh, or you could take four pictures of that barn, and we'll charge you for the four pictures, and you know, you still get the same area. So, it, you know, generally speaking, it's a couple dollars um, to do like a forty or fifty acre plot. You know, okay. which is the size of a small farm or, or, or private property. Okay. Uh, that's just. It depend, that's if you take the data right, and you're using the right kind of camera. We have a calculator on our website. But you need your own drone to do this, correct? Sure, sure. We, you know, we sell the, hard, the hardware um, as Drones Made Easy. We, okay. we sell uh, DJI products to, to do that with. Um, but you know, the, the Maps Made Easy part that we're running the Kickstarter for it is just a software web service. Okay, and then that's what you're raising money right for right now is the software web service. Uh, you're yep. at twenty five thousand at the time we're talking. Hopefully, a little higher by the time this goes out. But uh, <laughs> so, if if people donate to this, what what are they helping to fund? What 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 specifically will this money go to? Sure. So we have we have our our things that we're good at, mm -hmm. um, and then we have our things that we're not good at. And okay. We know that. Um, so we're going to have to hire some people to kind of uh, you know finish off you know some some security aspects, mm -hmm. um, some kind of just server connectivity and, and setup aspects. Um, but then also, um, basically it, it costs a lot of money to, to put a, uh, you know, to have computers on, on the internet, um, the servers to run this stuff and everything. So that's a big investment for us. You know, mm -hmm. we've invested the time and money or the time, uh, for creating this system, um, you know, kind of based on our experience and, and the things that we can handle, but we, we need help finishing off some of the, er some of the things to make it. So it's a, it's a product that'll be easy and safe for everybody to use. Got it. So you're trying to raise money to get that there, and you, you're put together a pretty nice video of how this works. People kind of <laughs> it's pretty, pretty easy to get excited about it when you see it in action like that. I mean, it, it drew my attention, and I, I hit so many delete buttons in my day to day workflow because I get so much crap from people with Kickstarters. So this one stood out because it's cool. It's just the idea of sending your own drone out there and making something like this for a reasonable price even is pretty interesting. So is there any chance you could use this to create like a high quality alternative to Google Maps down the road? It sounds like yep. the individual people own the photos that they take with their drones. Is that correct? Sure. Yeah. But we're, you know, our site's going to have a gallery where you can okay. share what you made um, okay. you know, and kind of say like, hey, look, I made this. Um, you know, but that puts it out there in the, pu you know, in the public. So, um, you know, it, we're very sensitive to people to kind of having people's data remain private if they want it to remain private. Understood. Um, but we're out, we also go out of our way to make it easy to share um, if they don't want to make it private. You know, mm. if you if if you want to you know share something that you made and take a big huge aerial imagery of it, aerial image of it. Yeah. Um, you know, you can put that out there and share it on Facebook and share it on, you know, whatever. Or you can embed it in your site, in, into custom sites, like it, a real it, estate It, it would be hosted on your site, but it would be open for people to share as much as they want. Kind of like, kind of like embedding a YouTube video in your blog. Sure. Um, you know, it's, it's hosted at YouTube, um, and, but you get a little iframe embed code, nice. and you drop that in your site. And, you and know, if the people... Right so, so what I'm reminded of, uh, if, if you have a camera... Like one of these new ones, you can take like a panoramic view and it'll stitch it all together. Is your software kind of working like that straight up? Just it's it's similar. Okay. Um, that that does um, you know that does some you know kind of basic rotational three D reconstruction. Mm -hmm. uh, it assumes that you're staying in one point and rotating, so it it knows that if that's how this data was created, it knows how to put it back together. Yeah. Uh, what what ours operates off of is basically getting multiple views of something from different vantage points okay and then kind of triangulating where each feature is and then building a 3d model and then we use that 3d model to turn into an ortho photo which is what people are used to looking at on on google maps mm -hmm. um actually a lot of the imagery you look at on google maps is not necessarily an ortho photo because you'll see the side of a building um, yeah True ortho ph photography, you shouldn't see sides of buildings. You should see roofs of buildings yeah. and tops of people's heads, but you shouldn't see you know stuff sideways. So oh, we that's try interesting. To, so so yeah. ideally, you should be right on top of the thing you're photographing at the time you want that to become part of this finished image, right? Well, not necessarily. So okay. that's where the 3D model comes in. So we build okay. a 3D model, and then we resample it from what the 3D model says is straight overhead. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so the it, result... it's pretty it's, it's pretty standard, you know, yeah. it, as far as how people are doing that um, these days. But um, it is it is different. But what it lets you do mm -hmm. is you know kind of collect data and then worry about 
the reconstruction of it later without having to worry about GPS and synchronizing GPS signals to uh, image capture, which is what we've done tons of and we know how big a pain in the butt it is. It, okay, so I didn't realize that was that complicated. So you're just doing kind of straight up image capture and you're stitching something together and you can do the coordinates part of it after the fact. After the fact, exactly. That's kind of the idea. So you could take a handheld GPS, go to specific points that you can see on this yep. photo and then pinpoint this is here. So the biggest problem for our approach is if you don't have a good base map, mm -hmm. how do you do this? Yeah. Uh, so then you go out and you say, okay, this rock, you, you, you use a GPS and mm -hmm. you say, okay, this rock here is this coordinate, you mm -hmm. know, to, you know yep. to, to, ten, to 10 decimals. Okay. And then, um, then you can go in and find that, that rock in the pictures you took and say, okay, this coordinate or this pixel in this image where the rock is, mm -hmm. is this coordinate. And then, you know, it'll it'll kind of adjust itself and, and, and give you the, the high quality imagery without needing to have a, a high quality base map behind it. So that's pretty cool. What do you think you can see people using this for practically? Or is it just a I, yeah, novelty? Okay. So there's, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know where, uh, you know, I'm sure your listeners are kind of all over the place, but yeah. in cities, everybody's used to having really good, um, high quality and fairly up to date, um, you know, what Google refers to as sat satellite imagery. Um, it's mm -hmm. not necessarily satellite imagery, it's taken from airplanes as well. But those airplanes uh, go over, you know, every couple of years and um, are, you know, taking their pictures from three to 5,000 feet generally. Okay. Um, you know, so you can only get a certain amount of detail out of that. Whereas if you want to fly over with a drone from, you know, 100 feet overhead, mm -hmm. um, you get a whole lot more detail. But, um, you know, in areas outside of cities and, and places where it's and outside of the U.S., mm -hmm. um, you know, Google, Google Maps cover, you know, Google satellite coverage is not very good. Got it. You know, it might be it might be one pixel in the map represents 200 meters. No, I've definitely you seen know. that the area I grew up in was rural Canada. And it, you, yeah, you don't. Oh, get yeah. <laughs> you have nothing up there. Yeah. So, you it's, know, it's, it's just not worth it for them to fly a plane over to get high detail and stuff and crunch, totally. up, and crunch it all and everything. Totally. So, so the barn is like five pixels. And can, exactly. Yeah. So, so if you so, want something more in depth, I mean, so, so we've got these high resolution maps. What, what would you use them for, though? Just knowing where everything in your field is like, like. Do well, you have any example of stories of people? Yeah, sure. So it's not even so much that it's more detail. Yeah. It's also that you control when it's taken. Mm. Um, you know, so uh, a construction site, for example, got it. Um, can you know take a pic take a take a map of it? You know, the day before construction starts, and then every week for the rest of that, you know, for the rest of the the duration of the construction, and essentially it'll turn into kind of a map video clip of yeah. the progress of of you know, what they've been building and where, what equipment was where and things like that during what times. And, okay. you know, so you can have remote project managers kind of look in and say like, okay, where are these guys? Where are these guys? Um, you know, or a real estate agent, you know, if there's a, an old uh, map on, on Google maps mm -hmm. um, that shows the house in the winter, you know, mm. and it doesn't look like the most appealing place. This is the case with my mom's house. I look okay. at it every time. I'm like, it looks like the Arctic tundra. <laughs> and, uh, I, I'm just like, oh gosh. But, you know, where's your mom live? Rhode Island, Rhode Island. Okay. So, yeah. So you can kind of go through and and uh, and take an up to date map, mm. you know, and, and, and it looks, you know, take it in the summertime. So it's all nice and green and looks, you know, looks nice. So for, if, if for a realtor stages. were selling a, a, a bigger lot, let's say, sure, you could have an overhead photo and that could be a good supplement. OK, so construction sites, realtors or uh, farmers potentially. Certainly, farmers. Um, yeah. A lot of the samples we have on our site, um, you know, show um, basically, basically just documenting um, the state of a farm at mm. that given time. So you can go in and say, "Hey, look, there's obviously something wrong over here. What's mm -hmm. going on? Um, we, we need to treat this area a little better." Um, yeah. And but if the you other, the other thing, you can track growth. Yeah. Um, you know, so if you take it, I, there's a sample on our site that's basically um, a potato farm in the UK mm -hmm. that was taken in early June, right after okay. it was planted. So you can kind of see, you can zoom in and you can see, almost see the leaves on the, each plant. Okay. Um, and then a month and a half later, the exact same plants, which are now, you know, feet wide, mm -hmm. um, and it kind of, you could you do that to track the growth um, wow. and make sure that everything is kind of, you know, you'll be able to, you know, estimate yields and, and things like that based on ground coverage. Um, and, and if you own the drone, places. you can do this as many times as you want. It's exactly. Just a exactly. Of setting it out there and then 
So that so let, let's say I own a drone. How much would it cost to acquire a drone capable of connecting with your service on the low end? Let's say uh, the lowest end. You know, there's you can probably get away with it for I don't know six hundred bucks or oh, something wow. like. That. Um, okay. You know, but to have it be automated. So that's that's the biggest mm -hmm. thing. Everybody everybody calls it a drone. I I you know it's technically just a remote control multi rotor yeah. helicopter. Okay. Um, if you're driving it, um, mm -hmm. I, I think of a drone as something that's doing an, an automated task, just okay. mindlessly doing what you told it to do. So you wouldn't need a drone. You could do it with like a remote control device. You can do it any if you can fly a camera around. <laughs> uh, you know, you can take pictures with it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we'll be able to process the imagery. Okay, it might not say... be the most efficient use of it, but. So yeah. 600 would be just something you'd be flying yourself. Or what would be like an autonomous drone that you could just program and send out to do this? Yeah, so we, we sell a kit. It's, I think it's like 2000 ish dollars. 2000 uh, okay. That's it's a, a, a decent size drone that has a, you know, um, yeah. battery life is the biggest issue, really. Mm, I can you know, see you that. Can, if you have a six minute battery life, it's like you can't get a whole lot done. Yeah, yeah. And batteries. Um, but if you, right. Yeah. So, um, but you need to be, you know, it needs to be big enough that you can hold a camera that okay. has decent enough quality to be able to, um, you know, capture images that anybody wants to look at. Um, mm. You know, it has to have a decent enough battery life to be able to cover ground and then, you know, make it out to a point, go back and forth and then cover ground and come back. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that's kind of an important part is, uh, you know, a ground station control software, which basically lets you program it and then you say, okay, go. Mm -hmm. and from the time you say "Okay, go" um, to the time it comes back, it's fully under you know automated control. I mean, we're talking two thousand dollars, though. What you're saying, but sure. you know, if you talk about buying a PC in 1985, okay. you know, you're going to be talking about the same figure. So, do you, you think these prices are likely to go down? I mean, because what you're saying sounds very practical for a business owner or a realtor, sure. like a farmer, but maybe not for the hobbyist. But do you think these things could get to the point where it would be accessible for the hobbyist? Well, they're already getting cheaper. Yeah. Um, a couple of years, you know, when this kind of first piqued my interest a couple of years ago was a company called Dragonfly mm -hmm. um, out of, uh, I think they're up from northern Canada, mm -hmm. um, but they were $25,000. Wow. You know, expensive. Big, yeah. big, big, scary black things, you know, that, that uh, I think they had six, six rotors that cost about $25,000 and uh, you had to go there and take a class to learn how to fly it. And, oh, you know, wow. It wasn't, you know, it was, it was a lot of gear to be flying around, and if you crash it, you know, that's expensive. So how long ago was that? Yeah, four years ago, maybe. Four years. So now yeah. we're talking about a similar technology to that, down to 2,000? That's an insane rate. Yeah, the, the DJI ones are nice. You know, they're the yeah. little white ones. They, they, look like, they look like a toy, mm -hmm. um, almost to their detriment. But, um, you know, they're, they're smaller. They're much, much easier to control. Um, you know, they're they're all a lot easier to control now. That's why you see so many people, uh, you know, using them and getting mm -hmm. into trouble with them. Getting into trouble um, with them. This is a a valid point to talk about. I mean, yeah, the the FAA, I believe, has been kind of iffy about what it can and can't regulate. They haven't really said a lot definitively. <laughs> is this something we should be concerned about if we're interested in owning an autonomous drone? Or you know, I think the I think the FAA is not iffy on okay. what they want. Uh, okay. They want um, all of them to be on the, stay on the ground. Um, okay. You know, but you know, but every, do they have everybody the legal realizes authority that this is, to have that. They have the legal authority that they've been told that they have okay. um, until that changes. Okay. So you know that's where that's where um, you know pressure from consumers and businesses and 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 Congress. Everybody knows that this is coming. Okay. You know, it's good. It, it'll it it'll be a fight probably, but it'll mm -hmm. be you know this is something that you know. Can, They'll be given their room in, in U.S. airspace. So basically, after World War II, there was a really, really great podcast. Um, on Radio on, Lab. On, was it? Yeah, on, yeah, on yep, NPR. Yep, and yep. it was fantastic. I was mm -hmm. just like, oh, this is the best thing I've ever heard. Okay. You know, so it basically said that private property ends at 83 feet. And public airspace begins at 500 feet. Wait, three feet? 83. 83. 83. I was going to say, I'm in an apartment right now. I'm yeah, over yeah. three feet. 83. Okay. Yeah, 83 okay. feet. So, and that's above the highest feature, I believe. Okay. Um, you know, but that's basically, that's private airspace at this point. Okay, so if um, I own the Empire State Building, it's 83 feet above the tip of the antenna? Or? Something, something, yeah, something okay. like that. Okay. So, you know, I, I'm sure there's weirdness in how that's, how that's kind of defined. But, Got it. But, you know, over the t it's, whether it's over the tops of the trees or over the highest land feature, you know. Okay. It, it's, 
that's not super well defined because I don't think they had any way to measure that back then anyway. Sure, sure. Um, basically, 83 feet was to keep airplanes from an air, from a local airport from scaring this guy's chickens. I believe Got his it. name is Tomic, Tomic, Thomas <laughs> Cosby. He sued the U.S. government uh, for basically, you know, putting almost putting him out of business because yeah. his chickens were dying, dying out of stress. So they basically you don't you know, mess around so, with chickens. Like chickens no, get no. spooked easily, yeah. and they'll yeah. No, that's that's a legitimate concern, is what I'm saying. So, so but the uh, you know the, the Supreme Court said okay, 83 feet. You know we it, these airplanes can't come within 83 feet of, of your property. Okay. So okay, fine. So um, then you know the the. This is, you know, this is referred to as air rights. Mm -hmm. um, so above 500 feet is, you know, that's FAA controlled airspace. Okay. They don't co they don't control below 500 feet. Okay. Um, the question is who does? Um, mm. You know, the Model because Aircraft it's, Association um, it's, has it's not the landowner, and it's not the yeah. FAA. So it's kind of this no man's land. There's okay. you know 417 feet of of no man's land that mm. that. You know, is prime area for you know dr drones to be operating in? Um, yeah, you know, how, how high the, for your applications would something need to be? Um, higher than the tallest feature is really all you know. Okay. Um, you, you're not going to get a great picture from right above a tree. Uh, mm -hmm. that will get stitched in from app, but um, you know, a lot of what we do is totally fine at 50 meters, which you know, 150, 160 feet or so. Yeah. Um, higher than that is. You know, that, but you're you're, that you're well into the no man zone at that point. Yeah, it, yeah. It, you can do it below it, um, mm -hmm. depending on what lenses and cameras you use. Um, but yeah, you, you know, there's there's that that no man's land there. Okay. Um, you know, but it, air rights basically say that you know you can you can do, you know, reasonable you know for for reasonable actions you can uh, you know use your private airspace. Mm. Um, you can't put up what's called spite poles. You can't build a two hundred foot pole or 500 foot pole <laughs> just, of to, your land. just to be it, like just hey to, this is just, mine it, you know so they, that's a thing they're called spite poles oh wow uh, yeah so they, it, it happened so much they made a term for it what if you put a flag on the spite pole isn't it then I, a patriotic pole and then I, I i guess so i you know i don't really know so yeah it's uh it's it's certainly interesting but you know okay. that that contested region there between 83 feet and 500 feet is the area of airspace that's generally being talked about and, and that being worked out is going to determine the viability of your business model, isn't it? Like if, if that's, uh, you know, no. our, our service works worldwide. Okay. Um, you know, so a lot of other countries have much more reasonable regulations mm. or no regulations um, on on the use of uh, drones and air and various airspace def definitions. So, so it's the we have a lot of interest. Yeah, we have a lot Americans of interest. can benefit from your innovation would be the question there. Yeah, you know, yeah. so we, and and these areas, these other countries, are the areas that are not served very well by Google Maps. Fair enough. Uh, you know, so you know, remote regions of Australia and and Canada. We have a lot of people talk to us from Canada and Mexico, um, yeah. UK. You know, a, a lot of a lot of English and Spanish speaking speaking countries, I guess, but. Um, you know, they found our Kickstarter and, you know, they've, they're very, very interested in kind of augmenting the bad satellite imagery that exists in their regions. Now, if you scroll up and down in Google Maps, you'll notice a lot of different copyright notes because they're buying mm. images from a number of different companies. If, if I had one of these drones sure. set up and I took just an amazing high resolution uh, sweep of an area surrounding, say, Peace River, Alberta, where it's just nothing's up there right sure if google wanted to buy my photos like are they mine could i sell them to them if they yeah wanted you took to? them okay yeah okay so you know we, we process it and give it back to you okay um you and know, you host you it to... but you don't own the copyright on the images yeah okay so you know we, we own the copyright on on the website that shows it mm -hmm. but you mm -hmm. know the, the user will retain full rights of of ownership of the of the product images because they, they took the, the source images mm -hmm. and then paid to get it processed okay so you're just you're, you're you're not looking to put together an alternative to google maps yourself you're looking to yeah. give people the option to take these similar kinds <laughs> of images yeah we we have a, a lot of interest from venture capital companies being like oh we're gonna you know make an extra a, a different google map crowdsourced mm -hmm. low earth google map They're yeah. like oh you know we really want to talk to you i'm like no i don't really want to get into that so you, know, we're, you, we're you had of, venture capitalists knocking on your oh, yeah. door about this, and you're like, oh, yeah. no, venture why not? Talk to anybody. So, um, <laughs> why didn't you want to get into that? All they want is your soul. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, 
So besides your soul, why didn't you want to go down that path? Why not make a user crowdsourced Google Maps alternative? Because we it, it, it could happen, and it yeah. could happen based on our processed imagery and things like that. It's just that's not where... That's not our superpower. We're not going to do it. We'll process mm. some of the some of the images, and everybody can use our service, and mm -hmm. then submit it to this kind of, you know, super Google Maps version or you know open source uh, version. But um, you know, we're not going to put that together. You're just not letting your mission creep that much. Yeah, yeah, I, I, on, yeah. yeah. We're we're staying focused. We're already not focused. We're already selling hardware and doing <laughs> consulting work and doing you know. So we don't need like an extra open source <laughs> project to babysit. Like it's just not. Yeah, that's fair that enough. being that being said, yeah. our imagery as as hosted by us could mm -hmm. easily be integrated into, um, you know, uh, uh, an open source map. I just I think the coverage would not be very interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, if, unless if, if, if covering the U.S. fifty eight fifty to one hundred or two hundred acres at a time mm -hmm. is going to take a whole lot of work. Um, so yeah. I think what would maybe be more interesting is actually just serving it up um, as, you know, in Google Earth, it, when you look at, you know, you get the Panoramio links and you mm -hmm. get all the different data sources from third party yeah. uh, people, you know, potentially, you know, things that we share, um, you know, in our gallery could mm -hmm. be included in that. And okay. that'd be kind of a cool thing, you know, that, that's maybe a little more, uh, you know, usable for people. Makes sense. You're not looking to replace this thing that exists. You're trying to just... Make it better images. when you need it to be better, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So, but but it plays well, you know. It'll play well with other things. You can easily import, you know. The, it, it, aside from embedding our, ma our our hosted maps in your site, mm -hmm. you could also take, you know, the the, the map tile address and include it in whatever project you'd, you'd want to do. Well, okay, Tudor, if people are interested in this, what steps should they take? Obviously, they're going to need a drone, and they're going to need to know about your service. So where should they go to get started learning? Um, well, our, our site is dronesmadeeasy.com. Okay. You know, we sell stuff. Um, you know, we sell various kits to kind of get up and going. Mm -hmm. um, sell uh, cameras, video transmitters, drones, remote you know, monitors, all, you know, lots of lots of accessories, um, you know, generally just DJI products um, okay. and, and a couple other vendors. But um, as far as drones go, it's just generally DJI. We, we feel like they're the most um, mature of the, of the co other companies that are out there. Okay. Um, you know, so for support reasons, we've kind of just kind of stuck with them. Okay. That and their, bat their battery life is about two times what the nearest competitor's battery life is. So oh, that was wow. kind of stuck down. Yeah, so that'll do it. But, and battery um, life limits everything from phones to electric cars. Okay, like that's yeah. kind of the key thing we need to improve to improve exactly, just yeah. about everything, isn't it? The, the yeah. world will be better after uh, you know Elon Musk's Gigafactory gets online and yeah. starts making cheap cheap batteries for for everybody. Yeah, but it's going to improve everything, isn't it? That's exciting well, to think about. Yeah. Batteries are so boring, we don't think about them that it, much, but it... And they're so hard to deal with. Like, mm -hmm. we spent so much time, you know, as engineers dealing with charging cycles and discharge rates and, mm -hmm. and you know, just power densities and, and then the mechanical aspects of it. And then, you know, the chemicals that are in these batteries, yeah. you know, are not nice things a lot of the time, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, aren't thermally stable and, and things like that. So it's, it's certainly, it, batteries are a very, very interesting topic and they, yeah. you know, how many batteries are, are you within 10 feet of right now? The answer is probably, even. Yeah, yeah, you can't even count. Like yeah. it's, it's ridiculous. So um, we're surrounded by them and mm -hmm. we just hope they, everybody just hopes they get better, but you know, and somebody's got to figure someone's that out. Someone's got to research it, but if they do get better, absolutely everything about our technology from our laptops. Everything gets better. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. Really great conversation, Tudor. I, I really hope people look into both the Kickstarter and the project in general. And uh, maybe we can highlight some cool maps on our website. I hope we can do that. Uh, yeah, I can give you a couple embed codes and we can, you know, sort of share it from there. Let people play around with this. Okay, thanks for sure. a great conversation. Uh, again, right. that was Tudor Thomas from uh, Drones Made Easy. He's got maps made easy on Kickstarter right now. You should check it out and consider supporting it.